All right, let's talk about page five, which is um, all about the follow-up to the sea ice versus land ice, which contributes more to sea level rise. So basically what we did in the lab was we had two experiments. In one Tupperware, we had water where we put an ice cube in it, and then we allowed the ice cube to melt, and we remeasured the sea level after the ice cube had melted. And we did a separate experiment where we had a piece of, quote, land, where we put the ice cube on top. So again, we measured the liquid before, and then after all of that ice had melted into the water. And what we discovered was that sea ice melt and land ice melt both caused the level of the water to increase, but sea ice melt on average only increased 0.2 centimeters versus land ice melt contributed 0.6 centimeters. So does this make sense? Yes, since sea ice is already taking up space in the water, when it melts, it replaces that ice and replaces that ice with water and doesn't cause the sea level to rise by much. So since it's already taking up space in the water, other than the part that's sticking out, all of this underneath is taking up space here. And so when it melts, it really doesn't add as much as when an entire ice cube from a different, quote, bucket um, all goes into that water. Okay, so when we did this little model, um, we needed to account for some variables in our model, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but basically, we needed to know the volume of the ice cube, and we needed to know the area of the Tupperware, the container that it was going into. And once we knew that, we could actually figure out, um, we could make a prediction using a calculation how much the water level would rise. So we can do this if we also know the volume of land ice on Greenland, and we know the area of the oceans. But of course, we're going to need to be mindful of some things like the numbers are going to be much larger. It's going to be difficult um, because, excuse me, the land ice isn't like a uniform height, uniform thickness, right? If this is a sheet of ice from the side. So that's going to make things difficult. Same with the area of the oceans. Obviously, it can get tricky um, to approximate that. So there's going to be some, some things that make it a little more challenging. Um, but let's do a little review of what our lab was like. What's the formula to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism? It's length times width times height versus the area of a rectangle is just length times width. So when you add an ice cube, let's say that's four centimeters by 5.5 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters, volume equals 4.0 times 5.5 times 2.5, that's 55 centimeters cubed. And the area of the Tupperware is 6.0 times 6.5, 
that's 39 centimeters squared, we can actually determine the level that the water will change in that Tupperware by taking the volume, 55, divided by the area, 39, and that comes out to be 1.41 centimeters. Now, I want to show my work here with units. 55 centimeters cubed divided by 39 centimeters squared. That centimeters cubed is really like centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. And of course, the centimeters squared is just two of those. So this cancels out, which is why you're left with centimeters and 55 divided by 39 is the 1.4, we'll call it, centimeters. Um, another thing I want to point out is it's a volume of the ice cube on the top. So it's length times width times height divided by the area, length times width. That is why we're able to divide that, those two by each other to get the height that the water will change by. Let's talk about scientific notation next. Um, it's annoying to have to write out so many zeros a lot of times. And so they use scientific notation to just make it a little easier by writing a number. The, it'll be like a number, then a decimal, and then you know maybe a couple more numbers. And you multiply it by 10 to the power of, and this number tells you how many places to the right to move that decimal. So for this problem, 3.619, I've got to move the decimal since it's times 10 to the eighth. I've got to move it to the right eight times. One, two, three, uh-oh, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I just fill in those spots with zeros. So this is called standard notation when you write out the number without that little shorthand of 3.619 times 10 to the eighth. So this is called scientific notation. And you may have seen this um, before. It's good to review, maybe in another science class, maybe a math class. So I want to say that there are a couple of different ways that you can enter this into your calculator. Of course, you can do it just enter in the whole number, or as you probably are more familiar with, you can hit times 10 and the little caret, times 10 to the eighth, or there's a new trick I wanna teach you, which is using a scientific calculator. If you have a smartphone, turn your phone sideways to get the scientific view, and there's a button, it's two E's, capital E's, but when you press, up, it, press it, it just shows up as one E, and it saves you time because E is the exact same thing as times 10 to the power of. And you've probably seen this before in your calculator, like an answer will come out 3.619E8. And you're like, what? Well, the calculator is saying, hey, this is the same as 3.619 times 10 to the power of 8. So I know it probably just seems like, oh, it's not even that much of a shorthand, but hey, every little bit helps if you're working with these big numbers. So um, go ahead and practice entering that into your calculator. I really recommend doing that because it will save you a lot of time. And then let's write some numbers in scientific notation here. So for this first one, we could do 6.78. We don't need to write the zero because um, that's just kind of a filler but we would do times 10 to the one, two, third miles, keep the units. The next one would be 5.2 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six kilometers. And I'm gonna show that with this number. So all I'm doing is I'm changing this comma to a period and now I'm counting how many over do I have to move this decimal? One, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's why I did times 10 to the sixth. 
And then this one would be just 4.6 times 10 to the 2 kilometers. And then writing out the numbers in standard notation, you usually just have to add a lot of zeros. So 4.6 times 10 to the 8th, that means I'm going to need 7 zeros. And then I always like to double check. Okay, if the decimal were here, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's right. Oops, I'm going to erase this. Okay. 3.25 times 10 to the 4th, so that would be 32500, 0, 32, oops, don't forget your units. And then I'm just double checking if I had the decimal here, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, yes, that's right. Okay, and the last one here, 9 times 10 to the 6th, that's a 9 and 6 zeros, so 9 million. Okay, given this information, how much do you think Greenland melting would relatively raise sea levels, a lot or a little? Well, even though ice is only 2% of this and only part of that ice would melt, I mean, there's just so much water in the ocean. So I'm using a little background knowledge, but I think it's gonna actually raise sea level quite a lot. All right, so let's do this. Um, Greenland's shape we're going to approximate as a rectangle and a triangle. Okay, so looking at the map of Greenland, what they've done here is they've really approximated it um, to being a square and a triangle to turn this kind of into a geometry question. And this is really important information here. The ice sheet is 1.5 kilometers tall. Um, another little helpful unit is one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So we know we're going to need to find the volume of the sheet of ice on top of Greenland, but let's go down and see kind of what this takes us through. Okay, blah, 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 scientific notation. We already did that. So 7A, how can your group figure out what the volume of land ice is in Greenland? So... We're going to need the area of the square, so length times width, but then times the height um, to get the volume of the ice that would be on top of the square part. And then we got to remember the um, base times height. Um, of a triangle, one half times the base times the height, and then we'll have to times that by the height of the ice. Okay, so we're going to have to then add those together to figure out the total volume. So let's do it. Let's figure out. Um, oh, I guess we have to do one more thing. It gave us the area of the oceans, right? Um, yes, the area of Earth's oceans is this number. So once we know volume, we divide it by area, just like we did in that warm-up, and we're going to know the height, which is sea level rise. Oops, sea level, sea level rise. Okay. So let's actually do this. The square is 1,000 times 1,100 kilometers. So let's just do volume of sheet of ice on the square part of Greenland. That's equal to 1,000 times 1,100 times the height it said was 1.5. Okay, and that's kilometers. And then the volume of sheet of ice on the triangle part of Greenland would be one half times what is the base of the triangle? 1,000 times the height, 1,100 
times the 1.5. Okay, and I need to add those together. Total volume of land ice on Greenland is 165. I know I'm not even using scientific notation. 825 equals. So that would be 2, 2,475,000 kilometers. And now I need the area of the oceans, which was given to us. It was 3.619 times 10 to the 8th to the power of 8. Okay, so now I need to do volume divided by area equals the height of sea level rise. So that is going to be 2475000 divided by 3.6. 1, 9 times 10 to the 8th. I wonder how OneNote handles this. OneNote did not like this. 3, 6, 1, 9. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so 0 0.0068 kilometers. And I want to get this into meters. So let's do a little dimensional analysis. So 0 0.0068 kilometers. There, one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Multiply across the top, that comes out to be 6.8 meters. Kilometers cancels out. Okay. 6.8 meters, it's kind of hard to imagine. But it does seem like a lot. What if only 25% of Greenland's land ice melted into the ocean? Explain your reasoning. Well, you would do 6.8 meters times 0.25%, which is essentially one-fourth. Well, let me type that in. 6.8 times 0.25 equals 1.7 kilometers. Oh meters. So let's make sure we all got the same answer. It should be 6.8 meters. And then let's check out this climate time machine, sea level. So if you raise it six meters, you can see all of the land that would go underwater all of Miami, look at that. And then you can kind of test it out and look at some different areas. Southeast Asia, lots underwater. Amazon Delta, lots underwater. Oops, <laughs> my, Am my Amazon is talking. Oh, because I just said Amazon. Amazon, stop. Northern New York, wow, Amsterdam's under. London is getting close to being impacted. So going back to wrap up this lesson, um, after exploring the time machine simulation, what are you feeling? To me, I'm feeling like 6.8 meters is a lot. And I'm just wondering, you know, how fast it's melting. That seems really scary. And then the last thing in class, um, that we did was, you know, what are some strategies we can do to stop this sheet from melting so fast? And um, had people come up with ideas. So, but that was pretty much the lesson, and then we'll be moving forward with talking about more design ideas. So, there you go.